everyone and welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've watched before. Today I'm going to be showing you seven, I'm going to say seven here because one of the attempts failed and I'm just going to put that out there right now that you can all do at home and this is using just household items that you will find lying around. So I'd just like to start out by telling you what I'm doing here and I'm using some masking tape. I do apologise about the state of the masking tape. I left it in some tea. So you want to take some masking tape and just put it all around the outside and also make a cross section through the middle so you're creating these four rectangular shapes. The first effect that I'm doing here is going to consist of water, watercolour and salt and what the salt's going to do is absorb all the moisture so you're going to be left with a residue that's going to absorb the colour into different areas. You just need to get yourself a little pot of water and then you just want to start colouring it in with a little bit of water until you have a slight sheen on it. So once you've done this, you want to pick your colours that are going to go in it. And this is basically just a very rough, very schematic kind of colouring in that's going on here. You're basically using the water to bleed into the paper there. And I went for these kind of sea bluey colours and greens because I thought they'd look quite nice together, especially with four different styles on the page. So I just wanted to keep it looking very nice and very aesthetic here. After you're happy with the colour that you've got on the page, you need to grab some salt. I'm just using some table salt. It's actually better if you use unmilled salt, so the thicker granules that you can get because they can absorb more in different areas and you kind of get different textures. But this can work just as well if you just put more salt on the different areas. And this is pretty much all you do. You just need to put it on there and then you need to leave it to dry and let it work its own magic. The next effect that we're going to do is going to be a very simple wave design. So you're just going to want to do the same here and add in your water and just do a light coverage all over that section there. And you're going to use that to blend in the paint evenly. A top tip for this effect is that if you use a darker colour at the top and then also use a darker colour during the middle section of this because it just emphasises that when you add in the white which creates the wake of the waves. For this next effect, we're going to be blowing paint around with a straw. This one's a lot of fun and you can really mix up your colors with this one and be prepared to get a little bit messy and maybe put some paper towels down if you're doing this one with children. What you're going to do here is just get some very pigmented drops of watercolour paint. You can use watercolour paint, you can use ink, you can use anything you want really as long as you can water it down a little bit so you can get it running about the page. You don't need to put any water on the background of this one because you're just gonna blow it around so it can create its own path. If you put water down first, it'll usually absorb into it and create a feathered effect. And we don't want this one, we want the lines to be really precise. I think this one looks really good if you use colors that contrast with each other because they can end up blending into each other, but if you use colors that are contrasting, they're more likely to stay separate from the rest and you can see them more distinctively. Colours down, you're just going to take a straw, I've just got this metal straw here, and you just blow it around until you 
have them all in a place that you're happy with. So for the last effect on this square, we are going to be using some cling film. So you just want to grab a small bit of cling film, A6 is perfect for this, but any size will do really. It just makes it more accurate if you have the size that you're working with. And just grab some paint and start moving it around on there. It's, and you just want to smudge that all over the cling film and until you get something you're happy with. I don't think you can ever really be happy with what you get on <laughs> this one until you see what the final outcome is. To do this, you just need to wash your paper with some water again, just like we've been doing on the past two attempts and then all you need to do is be quite quick with this um, but flip it back over. Another thing that I actually didn't realise was I think my cling film either had a hole in it or cling film is permeable and I just think mine had a hole in it. Um, so it doesn't matter if you do get paint on it because with watercolour it's so easy to wash it down and wash it off. So. I quite like the effect when it has a, a slight blue back tone anyway because it gives a more precise line when you're taking the masking tape off which is always the most satisfying bit of doing this. So once you've let this all dry you just need to take this masking tape off and reveal what you've made. Be careful when you're taking the masking tape off because the paper, once it's been wet, is very susceptible to breakage and ripping. Just be really slow when you're doing this. Uh, I'm showing you this in real time for now just so you know how slow I am actually doing it. And if it does start to rip, don't worry about it. Just start pulling it from the other end and you should be fine. can actually scratch the salt off as well, which looks quite cool too. But just use a ruler to scrape it off like this to show its true effects. So to complete the wave design, all you need to do is go back in and add a few white lines. You can look this up on the internet and make it as detailed or as abstract as you want. I kind of went somewhere in between and just did something that was quite quick but quite effective at the same time. You can use white acrylic paint or a white gel pen like this. I use both to create the effect but just whatever you're more comfortable with and it doesn't have to be accurate. And you can also go in and add different colours to this if you like as well. But it's just such a simple way to create breaking waves.
and here we have the first four effects. These are definitely my favourite ones. I kind of want to just frame this because I'm so pleased with it. So for the next ones we are upping up the ante a little bit here and we're creating a few more experimental effects with the watercolour paint. We're still using householder goods that you can find under your sink or even in the cupboard and this is the beauty of this one, we're just going to be using these things to create really cool effects. The first thing we need to do here is exactly the same setting out method as we did before, however we're not going to be sticking it to the desk this time because in this instance I need to move it around when I'm using it. So just go ahead and create these square rectangular boxes again and then I'll show you the next steps. For the first one, we are going to be creating a really cool bubble effect on the paper. Now it's pretty much how I would describe soap to look if you were to draw it. And this is exactly what it is and that's exactly why it looks like this because it's basically adding washing up liquid into some coloured paint and water and then just using a straw to blow bubbles into it and it creates this really cool bubble popped effect on the page. You've got to be careful if you want to keep it in the lines on this one but you can also cover the rest of the, rest of the squares if you really don't want it to bleed into the other squares. I chose to use black watercolour paint for this one because it was the most pigmented one I had. Because of the volume of water it's quite hard to get the pigment that you so desire. So you just need to be persistent with this and keep adding or you can use a shallower dish which would also do the same job. And I just kept adding the bubbles until I was kind of happy with it. For the next design we are going to be using a mixture of water bleach and watercolour paint. For the next square you just need to grab some householder bleach, you can use any kind. This one's just plain old thick bleach and just be careful when you're using this, you can put some gloves on which will protect your hands. If you do get some on your hands just go and wash it off straight away. And you don't need a lot, you just pour about a tablespoon in. What the bleach is going to do here is react with the paint and the water and it's going to create a bleedy sort of spidery effect. As you can see here I'm just using a thin layer of the water and bleach mixture and just spreading that over the page like I had done previously. Now I'm adding in the paint. Now this needs to be quite concentrated and it needs a little bit of water which is going to react with the bleach mixture and it creates kind of like a splodgy, runny effect. The more bleach you add, the more effect you are going to get on this one. And again, just do this until you're happy with the design and then just leave it to dry. The next one we're going to be using candle wax and 
watercolour paint. For this one you don't have to use candle wax, you can also use masking fluid to create the same effect with this one, I just didn't have any in at the time, or you can use masking tape to create the same effects. I think candle wax is just a little bit different and you can kind of move it around on the page a little bit before it dries and it's really easy to scrape off without damaging the paper. And this one is really simple because all it basically is is adding the candle wax and letting that do its thing because there's no control over that really unless you have a spout to pour it on with. After I'd poured the candle wax I just left it to dry and moved on to the next one until it was completely solid because I didn't want it mixing with the paint while I was putting that on. For this last one I'm not really going to recommend it because mine kind of failed here but you're going to need some oil and water and watercolour paint. Now the premise is here with this one because the idea does technically work, I just think I put too much oil in mine. Basically what you're going to need to do is have a tray of water similar to the one that we use for the soap and watercolour paint and just pour about a tablespoon of oil in, I probably put about five tablespoons of oil in mine and just mix that up and you're going to need to put in some watercolour paint as well. Put the watercolour paint in first and then add in the oil. Basically what happened with this one is that I just put too much oil in and none of the paint stuck at all and it's just ended up with a greasy piece of paper here. But the idea of this one is that the paint won't stick where the oil goes so you end up with a cool kind of lava lampy design with this one. While I was waiting for the other one to dry, I just went back into the wax one and added the colour in there. You can pick whatever colour you like for this. I definitely realised at this point that this one was just not worth salvaging anymore. And now just peel off the masking tape as you did for the other one, because these are all dry and all ready to go. And there we have it, seven and a half watercolour designs that you really need to try. I really enjoyed filming this one and I hope you enjoyed watching it. So give this video a thumbs up if you did and I'd like to create more like these. So I will see you very soon. Goodbye.